the Comet. Powered by four Rolls-Royce Avon jets, its takeoff run is exceptionally short. Let's go upstairs and get alongside the Comet in the air. Welcome back to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. We're sitting in the flight deck of the Comet 4. This is the final version of the Comet that entered production. In this video we're going to consider the later marks of the Comet uh, following the investigation on all the redesign work, how that contributed to a very successful airliner, and how it also contributed to other airliners gaining the benefits from all the work that had been done by de Havilland. The Comet 4 made its first commercial flight in 1958 and was directly derived from the Comet 3, which was used as a test airframe to speed up airworthiness certification. The Comet 4 was a larger aircraft powered by significantly better Rolls-Royce Avon engines and could carry up to 81 passengers. The thicker gauge construction of the cabin metal, alterations to stress points on the cutouts and rivet points meant that this was now a very different aircraft. The years that the Comet was grounded had allowed competitors to catch up, particularly Boeing, which launched at 707 in the autumn of 1958. The Comet 4 had much improved range being able to fly London to New York, but so did aircraft such as the 707, and with the Boeing being more cost effective for many airlines, it proved very stiff competition for the new de Havilland aircraft. The Comet 4 sold just over 70 units and continued in service until the early 1980s with Dan Air. De Havilland continued passenger jet aircraft design and development after the Comet with the Trident and the Hawker Siddeley 146, both of which can be seen at the museum. Commercial passenger aviation owes a massive debt to the pioneering Comet, as the findings after the tragic crashes enabled the aircraft that followed to be tested in more appropriate ways. This had a huge impact on safety, comfort, endurance and cost, and ultimately led to the international travel industry we see today. As a footnote, we mustn't forget the Nimrod, developed in the mid-1960s from the Comet 4. Fifty of these aircraft served in various guises from 1967 until 2011, offering maritime patrol, surveillance and electronic countermeasures technology of the highest order. Powered by Rolls-Royce Spey engines, the Nimrod was capable of 580 miles an hour and had a range of up to 5,700 miles. During the Falklands War of 1982, a Nimrod flew over 8,000 miles on one mission with in-flight refuelling. Once the fuel weight had dropped later in a mission, the aircraft could shut down two of its engines to again increase its endurance. The use of reverse thrust enables it to operate from quite small airfields. The Comet paved the way for jet airliners and was truly a pioneering design. What de Havilland had done is come up with a template for good practices for design and manufacture that led to the airlines that we have today. Airliners like the Trident and like the 146, both of which you can see at the museum. We hope you like these set of three videos about the pioneering comet. If so, please like and subscribe, please share on social media, and check out our website for how to visit the museum. And come and have a look at the comet, the comet crashing, crash uh, panels, the 146 and the Trident and the other de Havilland aircraft. See you at the museum.